In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this raised dog feeding station with a drawer underneath for storage. Hey guys, my name is Tim Tognacci and welcome back to another episode of Casual Builds, the channel focused on bringing you beginner DIY and woodworking projects. I had a lot of fun building this and overcame a lot of woodworking first for me personally. I'll make sure I go through each step and explain what I'm doing along the way. And be sure to stay tuned to the end to see if my dog even likes this. This project has been on my to-do list for quite some time now, and since I had some leftover plywood and poplar boards from the workbench that I built not too long ago, the timing was perfect. So far, I've just been breaking down the plywood to construct the box for the feeding station, and at this point I realized I was not wearing my hat. Much better. So these two pieces have been cut to 14 inches and that will ultimately make up the depth of the cabinet and that also matches the drawer slides that I'll be installing later on. Now I'm just cutting each piece uh, for the top and the bottom as well as the two side pieces and these dimensions need to be adjusted based upon the size of your dog. So if you have a dog that kind of looks like this, you'll be okay with those dimensions but if you have a Chihuahua or a Great Dane, um, they might need to be adjusted a little bit. Now typically I would have went with uh, a butt joint and pocket screws, but I really want to challenge myself here so I decided to do mitered corners. And the process really is just cutting one side of each piece at a 45 degree angle and then setting up a stop block just to make sure that the two side pieces are the same and the two uh, top and bottom pieces are the same as well. And if you ever have the opportunity where you're making something for yourself or for your dog and it doesn't need to be perfect, I encourage you to try something new and just kind of learn from that experience because if you make a mistake here, it really doesn't matter too much. With all the pieces cut to their final dimension, the next step was to measure out the placement for the two dog bowls on the top piece. So I just measured out the diameter for the dog bowl, subtracted just a little bit, and then used my compass to draw the circles. I will drill a hole to just get me started so then I can take my jigsaw and cut out the remainder of the circle. And you don't have to be too precise here. Just try to get it as close to the line as possible and we'll eventually come back and just sand down any of the sharp edges. The next step, it's uh, time for assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything up to 220 grit, just all four pieces, just because it will make things a little bit easier later on. So my thought process here was to use my biscuit joiner just to help with alignment and rigidity. In case you're unfamiliar with what a biscuit joiner is, you basically take these little biscuits and then you put them, no, 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 not in your mouth. You put them in the slots cut by the biscuit joiner. And you want to think of the biscuit joiner as a tiny little table saw where you have the blade lowered underneath the table, you lift it up and then back down again. Wow, that's a terrible description, but you see what I mean. Also, how many times can I say biscuit? Looking back, I probably would have just skipped the whole biscuit joiner step entirely and just used glue um, with some blue tape just to get everything all situated. I was putting clamps on and then realized I couldn't get the alignment right, so I just came back, took the clamps off, and then just set some blue tape, which, uh, which did the trick. And now I'm breaking down more plywood, and this will be the back of the cabinet. I'll attach this with just some glue and brad nails. And you can see here that I had some uh, minor imperfections with my miners, but I just came back and put some wood putty or wood filler in there just to hide them and I'll eventually paint it white so it's uh, no big deal. Next, I cut some thin strips of a poplar board that I had laying around again from my workbench and this will ultimately be the edge banding for the front. Uh, I just put some glue down and then set that on top and then use some blue painter's tape for clamping.
Now it's time to start working on the drawer box and there are a few measurements just to be mindful of. When measuring the height, make sure you factor in how thick the drawer bottom will be and also account for an eighth inch gap from the bottom of the cabinet as well. And for the width, take into consideration the two drawer slides. For the ones I used, they were about half an inch, so I measured the inside opening and then subtracted an inch from that measurement. And for the assembly of the drawer box, I'm using glue and pocket screws and then attaching the bottom with some brad nails. This should be plenty strong. Now with most of the assembly done, I sanded everything down, I put on a coat of primer, and then two coats of white paint. Oh, and if you don't have one of these little mixer things, I'd highly recommend picking one up. They're fairly inexpensive, but make mixing paint fairly enjoyable, if that's even a thing. I'll leave a link to one in the video description. Now it's time to install the drawer slides. Again, this is something that I've never done before, but the process was very straightforward. The instructions that come with the slides and these clips of me installing them will do a lot more justice than me trying to explain it. So I'll be quiet and let you watch. Next, I started working on the drawer face, which ultimately consisted of two boards glued together. I measured all my cuts, making sure to leave some room to come back later and then bring it down to its final dimension. And the boards weren't completely flat, so I milled them down using my jointer, planer, and table saw. But if you don't have access to a jointer or a planer, you could always just use a piece of plywood for the drawer face. That'll work just fine. With the drawer face all glued up, I brought it over to the table saw and cut it down to its final dimension. I used my router with the chamfer bit along the outside edges of the drawer face to give it a little, I don't know, something extra. So I had this drawer pull on hand, but I really wasn't feeling that, yeah, just get out of here. So I decided to make my own with my CNC machine. Now personally, I think this dog bone is a much better idea for a drawer pull but uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. So in this shot, you can kind of see me talking to myself about how I want to install this little decorative backing piece that sits on top of the feeding station. Not only would it give it a nice little decorative touch, but it would also help stop any little doggy bits from falling behind the cabinet. So I did the rest of the assembly kind of in a weird order, but ultimately this little backing piece that's gonna sit on the top, I screwed it together with some screws 
obviously, and then used epoxy to attach it to the top. Um, and then I also just installed the drawer pull to the drawer face with some screws, but used a little bit of super glue just to hold it in place while, uh, while I screwed in from the back. And to install the drawer face to the drawer, I use some double-sided tape just to get it um, in the right place. And then I use some screws that I drilled in from the back. And then once the epoxy had cured, I would came back and sprayed on a few coats of water-based polyurethane, making sure to sand in between each coat. But before you go, let's uh, let's see how my dog reacted to this thing. There you go. Have some cheese. <laughs>